let's talk about all of these things that you see around me right now. And this is really going to help you build your vocabulary because I want to teach you some brand names that have become legitimate English words. And well, really companies, they come out with products and they give it a name and that's their brand and they try to sell it, they try to market it. And sometimes that brand becomes so popular and so well known, it really then becomes the name for the product in general. And as we go through this, I think it will make a little more sense and you're probably even going to recognize some of these brands and, and some of the words that I'm going to teach you. But let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Wes. The channel is Interactive English, which is all about trying to help you achieve your fluency goals, different lessons on vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. So if that's what you want to do, please subscribe, turn on notifications so that you will learn about future lessons. Let's begin with the first one, which is Band-Aid. So this is a, it's the brand, it's the name of a product that was developed by Johnson & Johnson in 1920. It's been around for a long time. And really, it's just an adhesive bandage. That, that is what this is, except nobody calls it an adhesive bandage. And I, I, I'm from the United States. Overwhelmingly, I think people just say Band-Aid. If I cut myself, especially just maybe like a little cut on the arm, I'm not going to ask for an adhesive bandage. I'm gonna ask for a Band-Aid. The next word or brand is Photoshop. And this is actually the name of some photo manipulation software. It was developed by Adobe in 1990. And often I think people are going to use this as a verb. You could also use it as an adjective, but let me give you some examples with some of my own pictures that have been Photoshopped. Right there, uh, this is a, an image that I Photoshopped for one of the lessons. Yeah, I really, I really don't have um, abs like that. And then here's another uh, picture that I Photoshopped. That's me with BTS. And yeah, you can do it to, to be funny, but again, nowadays, I think a lot of people will try to change or manipulate photos for a variety of different reasons. And when that happens, you could say that somebody photoshopped the picture, which is using it as a verb, or I could say that the image is photoshopped or the image was photoshopped using it as a participle adjective. But it is a very useful word if you want to refer to some picture that has been changed in some way, and you could say it's photoshopped. And then we have a very famous brand and a very popular word, which is Google. And I'm sure you, you're probably familiar with Google. It is a very famous search engine that people would use to look up information. And it, it was developed by Alphabet in 1998, even though back then I, I think the company was named Google and then they changed their name to Alphabet. But people will use this as a verb, pretty much telling you uh, to look some information up. That, that's really how it's used. You could even use it as a command. Maybe you're telling somebody, hey, just, just Google it. You want to find out some information? Just Google it. And if all of you, if you Google BTS, you are not going to find this picture right here because this picture is definitely Photoshopped. But any information you want to look up, just Google it. Next, we have the word Kleenex. And this is a brand that was developed by Kimberly Clark in 1924. Again, it's been around for a very long time. And really, well, what it is, it's, it's a tissue. Now, I, I will say that using the word tissue is also very common. I think that, uh, well, I'm just thinking of what I would use. Honestly, I think I use both of them. I, I'd probably switch back and forth between Kleenex and tissue. Sometimes I might ask for a Kleenex. Other times I might ask for a tissue. It really doesn't matter because I always get the same thing. Next is Q-tip. It is a product that, yeah, I use. I, I think I have some Q-tips around the home. And this is from Unilever. It came out in 1926. And it just became so popular that instead of saying like cotton swab, people would just say Q-tip. People still do say cotton swab, or they may even just say a swab, but I think in places like the United States, it's pretty common for somebody to ask for a Q-tip, or they say, like I would say, we need to get some Q-tips. We're out of Q-tips, I'm gonna go to the store, and I'm gonna buy some Q-tips. 
Then we have the word Xerox. This is, well, it's the name of the brand, but it's also the name of the company. And it's really, it's just a photocopy machine. And this came out in 1938. And also I would say like, just pay attention to the pronunciation Xerox because the spelling and the pronunciation can be a little confusing. And you could use this as either a verb or a noun. So I could use it as a verb and I could say that uh, I need to Xerox these documents or it, as a noun, instead of saying like, well, I need to make a copy or I need to make a photocopy, you could say I need to make a Xerox of this contract. Jacuzzi. And I, I like this word because I enjoy relaxing in a jacuzzi. This is also, well, it's the name of the, the brand, but it's also the name of the company. And really it's just referring to a hot tub. Jacuzzi came out in 1956. And well, some people, instead of saying hot tub, they may say jacuzzi. I will say that I, I think hot tub is, well, this is more commonly used if people are going to talk about like, hey, let's go, let's go sit in the hot tub and relax. But it's good for your comprehension because some people may say jacuzzi instead. And as you can see, that is something that I like to do. I, I just like it. And that picture was not photoshopped. Then we have Crock-Pot. This is a brand from Sunbeam Products, came out in 1972, and it's really just a slow cooker, and you could use the word Crock-Pot to refer to any, any type of slow cooker. And the word crock comes from the type of pottery that many of these slow cookers are made of. And last but not least, we have bubble wrap. I, I love this product. It was created by the Sealed Air Corporation in 1960. And interestingly enough, they tried to use this for, for other purposes like wallpaper or insulation until eventually it started to be used for, well, the way that we all know it today, which is packaging material. So if you get a box in the mail, there, there's a good chance you might find some bubble wrap in there. And I, I have some bubble wrap right here. It's, I'm sure you could probably find some around your home. And I don't know about you, but I, I like to pop bubble wrap. Oh, that was not, that was not a good one. Oh, that's better. I hope you learned some new words in today's lesson. And I, I also hope that they're pretty easy for you to remember because you can picture these products and you may even have some of them around your home right now. If you enjoyed the lesson, please hit that like button. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.